When we first built our hatchery in 1989 and for 15 years thereafter, we successfully grew larvae, billions of larvae every year without having to monitor the seawater. The first time I heard ocean acidification discussed was probably around 2007 as we were trying to understand what was causing these mortalities in the hatchery. And it was around 2008 or so that the failures happened more regularly than the successes and this whole issue came into focus for us. Uh, addressing carbon pollution is not a small thing and our industry isn't going to do it by ourselves. Live Ocean is one of the things that the Washington State Legislature funded in order to try to help oyster growers in the state deal with ocean acidification. It's just like the weather forecast that you get on your phone has a big sophisticated numerical model behind it predicting things out a few days into the future. And Live Ocean does exactly that same thing for the ocean. The main guts of it are built with Python, that's, and that's sort of a, a glue language for the architecture. The main model runs on a Linux cluster, and then those systems can speak freely and push files up to Azure. Working with Azure has enabled me to do more and faster, specifically with the, the outreach part of this project that is, it's separated and made available all the output in ways that would have been hard for me to do on my own. Just to describe ocean acidification is fairly complicated and a lot of people don't really have an intuitive sense for it. I think data portals and models like Live Ocean can really make that bridge because even if people don't understand the chemistry, they'll look at the color coding and they'll see how that changes with location, with season, and they'll, they'll get a sense that it's real and that they're connected to that. I would like for people to be able to access the Live Ocean output from many different portals and develop, if they want to, their own uh, websites that use it for, in different ways. That's something that's going to be enabled by Azure, is sort of spreading out the information in ways that I didn't foresee. You know, the, the information we're getting from Live Ocean and the prediction of these different ocean acidification events is important for policymakers and for scientists so we get a better picture of just exactly how the seawater chemistry is changing over time. You know, again, from a management standpoint, how to manage our different operations around these corrosive water events. What's so exciting about Live Ocean is it is uniquely addressing the ocean acidification variables. That's a breakthrough. That's something that's new. That's something that we don't have another model currently that's really addressing that. <laughs>